Okay, so here we go. I am going to do a uh, quick, hopefully quick, demonstration on the uh, latest implementation of the waveform editor in Monstrum Wave XT. Uh, both Monstrum Wave XT and Monstrum Wave One have recently been uh, updated with uh, some some new features and enhanced features and some bug fixes, which make the uh, the wavetable and wave editor much more usable and um, beneficial. Um, so. I'm going to give a basic uh, overview here. Uh, what we're looking at now is just uh, Monster Wave XT, which is connected to a Microwave XT. And I'm going to initiate a patch and just come up here to initiate. And you can hear that. One of the best ways to audition a wavetable and uh, um, user waves is with a initiated patch with wave one turned all the way up and wave two turned all the way down and um, the start wave parameter parked on the slot of the wave table on which your waveform exists um, so that might sound a little confusing but it really is not um, it's completely straightforward so um, I will go to let's just this feedback uh, wave table which has as you see up here in the in the top of the the GUI in Monster Wave, this is referred to as the wavetable strip, um, and this just visualizes which step of the wavetable is uh, has a waveform part um, in it. So you've got 60 steps in the wavetable, and um, you can place a, 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 a waveform within each one of these steps. Okay, and uh, as you can hear, uh, if I turn down wave one, I'm sorry, if I turn down wave two and I park wave one uh, right at start wave position uh, one and I'm gonna hit this hold note so you can hear this um, as I travel through the wave table you can hear the timber of the sound change so when I park on the spots that have a waveform assigned to it uh, you can hear the timber change so this is waveform 65 uh, slot one has waveform 108 assigned to it so on and so forth. So if I move on to slot 41, this is wave form 63. Uh, and slot 61 is wave form 90. Okay, and you can actually see those waveforms in this editor currently um, by clicking on the position in the wavetable. And you can actually see these waveforms in the waveform editor. And not only can you see these these waveforms, but you can edit them. Um, so those are the the waveforms of the timbers that you're hearing at those positions. Okay, so that's a very general gist of how the uh, you know the, the layout and the overview. So next, we're going to create a wavetable with custom waveforms, and I'll show you how to do that with Monster Wave. First, you're going to come to a uh, user wavetable. Let's start with user. Uh, user 96, and we're going to initiate this. Boop. And that just basically sets uh, a blank wavetable. Um, and I'm going to park, I'm going to assign um, user wave 1000 at position 1, which currently is uh, a sine wave. And position uh, 61, I'm going to assign waveform 1249 which is currently just a straight line which creates a square wave a waveform on the microwave xt consists of 128 8-bit samples um, which is represented down here in the full waveform waveform preview uh, but only the first 64 of them are stored or transmitted those first 64 are represented here in this wave data editor here in this grid um, what you see down here is how the microwave XT actually uh, utilizes the waveform and how it sees the full waveform, all 128 bits. Um, this is just the first 64 bits, which you're editing in the editor. Um, and the editor only deals with the first 64 bits. Uh, the microwave only transmits the first 64 bits uh, just to you know save time and space and all of that good stuff. Um, and as the manual goes on to say here, the second half is the same as the first half, except the values are negated and the order is reversed. That'll make more sense as we go along here, but it's it's represented very simply here with uh, all of these values here that are down at the very bottom of the wave uh, wave uh, data editor. Um, 
flipped over onto the top here. So it's uh, essentially what you got here is a square wave. We have uh, a simple wave table now with two spots utilized. Um, the first spot is waveform 1000, second spot is the very last spot in the wave table, and that is waveform 1249. Okay, we're going to save this wavetable to the synth at uh, user 96 and confirm. And you see I've got my um, start wave here. I'm going to park it right there, the very first spot. So we hear our, our nice sine wave. Um, and when I travel to the end of the wavetable, you can hear that square wave. So that's our first custom wavetable. Um, and uh, an important note, an important thing to note here is that you will not hear changes to a wavetable or a waveform unless you actually save back this wavetable back to the synth. Um, so you can be making changes here and save waveforms, but you're not going to actually hear those changes to the waveforms until you actually save the wavetable. Um, when you save the wavetable, um, the, the microwave XT will then regenerate the, uh, the timber of the sound. <clears throat> it's just an important thing to, to note. Uh, so when you're working in here and you're wondering why you don't hear changes that you're making, uh, that's that's why. Okay, so uh, I'm going to demonstrate something here, kind of simply. Um, uh, wave uh, waveform 1000. I'm going to use these generate shape uh, knobs here. Um, before I do that, I'm going to go through and just kind of show you uh, the different features and different functions of the waveform editor. Um, just from top to bottom here. Uh, we've got load from sound file, uh, ROM preset, user preset. So this is where we can load in our presets. Um, this is just one of many ways we can load in presets into the waveform editor. And we can also load, fr load from a file. Um, with this uh, this editor, we can save, a, save our waveforms to a file down here. And this is where you load those in. Um, then we've got a little bit of uh, some information here on the top of the, the wave data grid that shows you where this waveform came from, whether this is a user preset, you know, if we change here ROM preset, this should change to ROM preset, user preset, etc. Um, and it'll show you the, the details on where that waveform came from. Otherwise, uh, if I click on the wave table, um, this tells me that this, this waveform came from wavetable cell 61, and it is wave 1249. Uh, we also have some controls here to adjust the grid brightness. I like to kind of keep those keep those down. Um, then we have some controls here for uh, shift up, shift down, limit low, and limit high. Uh, we can also negate. Negate basically does exactly what it says, and that negates uh, the the values uh, over along the the uh, the x-axis. And Shift up and shift down will actually shift those values up or down. Um, if we draw on this um, grid, we can actually draw our own waveform. And uh, the, I can demonstrate to you now uh, when, when I hit the shift up button, what happens and shift down. Um, let's say I want to limit the high and limit the low. See what happens. It, it limits the uh, the values from going above or below. Um, otherwise, I could draw past our viewable um, window onto this grid, so to speak. Now, if I hit limit high and limit low, and then shift up or down, it will clamp those values. That's a couple little tricks here. Um, and then again, negate will negate the values. Uh, and then down here on the bottom, we've got reverse. So that'll reverse the values along the y-axis. <clears throat> and um, now here we've got generate shape. And generate shape is in yellow. Shape mix is in green. And you can see our wave data is in blue. So the idea here is that we can create a shape with these uh, wave shapers and mix it, um, which will mix the values, and you can see if your yellow value mixed with the blue value yields, yields the green value. And we can plot that mix to generate new wave data, which can then be saved back to the wave, uh, to the, uh, I'm sorry, to the microwave XT. So blue data on this wave editor grid can be stored to the microwave XT. Um, green lines indicate a mix of values, and yellow lines or curves indicate a, a shape that we're creating. 
Um, so you cannot save this yellow shape until you hit plot shape, which will then plot that shape into a blue line, which is wave data, which can then be saved back to the wave uh, to the uh, microwave XT. So that's the the general gist here. So uh, what I was going to do, um, as I said, was I was going to create a, a uh, edit this wave this wavetable a little bit more. What I'm going to do on this this first step of the wavetable is create a sine wave. I'm sorry, a uh, square wave. And I'm going to save this to waveform 1000. And you see you get a nice little preview here of the waveform that you're saving over. Um, just so you don't accidentally save over something you don't want to save over. And this is fine. I'm going to save over that guy. If I save this wavetable back to the synth, I'm now hearing the square wave. So now if I go halfway through here, it should be almost silent. Um, and that would be the same as if I just plotted a, uh, a zero value across. Um, and I'm going to save that as a waveform at uh, slot one, th uh, user preset 1001. See, now you hear that sound. And then when I travel between those two locations, then I'm hearing the, uh, the approximation between those two waveforms. So now here on, let's put uh, another waveform here. 1248. That's what we've got now. Well, let's just hear what that sounds like. Show you what we can create with uh, create with these these wave shapes. Save that back to 1248. And again, we need to save this wavetable. And again, I'm going to just repeat this process.
so there you get the gist of uh, some of the things you can do. Um, you can create some very unique and, and uh, creative sounds and creative shapes with these wave shapers. Um, and uh, I hope you have lots of fun and feel free to ask questions. And um, thank you for taking the time to watch. Take care. Bye.